So before we move on to the drop shipping section, I just want to be completely upfront and honest with you. And this is my view on drop shipping. Now I've tried to make money drop shipping for many years. And I've tried drop shipping on eBay. I've tried creating websites that drop ship products. And I've also signed up for middleman such as Doba, which is very similar to Salehu and other services like that, and try to dr drop ship products from them. And what I've learned after my experience is that drop shipping is a really bad way to make money. And I know a lot of people are not going to want to hear this, but I just want to be truthful with you. I've tried for years to try and make money drop shipping, and it's really hard to do it, and it's honestly not worth your time. If you want to really make money on eBay, it's important that you wholesale instead of drop ship. So I want to go over why drop shipping is so attractive in the first place. Because I understand why so many people want to drop ship, and I felt this way too. It seems like you don't have to spend any upfront money. And that's because the dream behind drop shipping is that your manufacturer is going to ship the product for you, and you're going to pay them with your customer's money. It also is attractive because you don't need to send inventory to your house. With drop shipping, you're sending items directly from the manufacturer to your customer and not to your home first. And lastly, why drop shipping is so attractive is because the manufacturer does all the work for you. And not only do they ship your products for you, but if you have an unhappy customer, the idea is that your manufacturer is going to do and handle all the returns for you. Now, here's the truth about drop shipping. Very few suppliers that drop ship are still in business, which means you have a very small selection of products to choose from. And also, I have tried for years to make money drop shipping, and I was never successful. Now, I did make a couple hundred dollars here and there, but it never worked out to be consistent profit. And ultimately, it just didn't work out with a drop shipper. Either the products were bad, the profit margins were too low or I couldn't find enough products that I could drop ship on eBay. And finally, with drop shipping, there's a lot of competition. And the reason for this is, like I mentioned in the last si slide, there are a lot of reasons why people want to drop ship because it seems so attractive. But at the same time, there are very few drop shipping suppliers in business. So that means a lot of people are selling the same products from the same drop shippers which means you have a ton of competition on eBay. So like I said earlier, if you're truly interested in making money on eBay, I highly recommend that you wholesale products instead of drop ship. Now I included this drop shipping section because a lot of people ask for it. And if you're really interested in learning more about drop shipping, this next section will help you learn a lot. But I just want to reemphasize this, that I have tried for years to make money drop shipping in every way possible, and I really don't think it's possible. And I know there's a lot of people online that have claimed that they've made thousands of dollars drop shipping, but I honestly think they haven't, and they're just saying that because they want you to buy their tutorials or ebooks, because they know how many people are attracted to the idea of drop shipping. So let's move on. I'm going to teach you about drop shipping because I think you might be interested, but just keep in mind that if you really want to make money, wholesaling is the way to go. In this video, I'm going to talk about the four different ways that you can source products to sell on eBay. And I'm also going to explain what drop shipping is. So there's four ways to sell products. And the first is the most common way, and that's to sell items you already own. So most people on eBay are selling items that they already have in their house, and that is what the website is originally intended to do, to help people sell old things they have to someone else. Now, eBay is often used to sell informational products, and this is most commonly seen with eBooks. So there are a lot of eBooks for sale on eBay, and there's actually a website that I used to source eBooks from called Fluddle.net, and they have hundreds of ebooks with complete resale rights, so you could simply put them up on eBay. Now, I really don't recommend this because the books are outdated and there's really not much money to be made selling ebooks, but I thought you'd find it interesting. So, then after that, we have drop shipping and wholesaling. And as I mentioned in the last video, wholesaling is the real way to make money on eBay, in my opinion. Now, of course, selling items you already own is a great way to make money. 
But once you run out of products to sell, there's not much you can do. With wholesaling, you can import products consistently and consistently make money on eBay. So now you might be wondering, what is drop shipping? Well, drop shipping is a model and how it works is the customer places an order with you and once the customer places an order with you, you forward your customer's order directly to a manufacturer that drop ships. And once that manufacturer receives your order from your original customer, that manufacturer will ship their product directly to your customer. So what this means for you is the product goes directly from the manufacturer to your customer and you never touch it. It also means that you get paid from your customer before you pay your manufacturer for the product. So you can see why this model is so attractive to a lot of people. But like I mentioned earlier, it is very, very hard to make money drop shipping. In this video, I'm going to show you what to look for in a dropship supplier and also how to find dropshippers. And more specifically, I'm going to show you how you can find dropshippers for free, how you can find dropshippers using a paid database, and also what dropshipping databases that are paid that you want to avoid. So let's get started. So when you're looking for a good dropshipper, there's a few things you want to keep an eye out for. And the first of all is what is their return policy? That's because if you have an unhappy customer that wants to return a product, you want to make sure that your dropshipper is going to handle that responsibility and they're going to do a good job because you want to make sure your customers are satisfied. And if that dropshipper doesn't really have a clear return policy, it most likely means that in the case of one of your customers wanting to return something, they're going to do a poor job. They're going to make them wait a while or they're not going to return the product at all. So it's very important that you look for a dropshipper with a clear return policy and make sure it's a good one too. The next thing you want to look for is high quality images and descriptions. And this will save you a ton of time because you really need those high quality images in order to sell your products on eBay. And if they don't provide high quality images, then you're going to have to buy the products yourself from the dropshipper and then take high quality images at your own home or place of business. And that's very time consuming and in most cases, unless you have the right photography equipment, you won't be able to take as high quality photos as they could if they had professionals do it. And also you want to look for drop shipping suppliers that have product descriptions. And that'll just save you a lot of time because then you don't have to write product descriptions for each of the products yourself. And another thing you want to look for is how many products does that drop shipper sell? And more specifically, how many products do they drop ship? Because a lot of suppliers may drop ship only a certain number of products, and you want to make sure that that's enough for you. So there is no magic number here, but let's say, for example, you find a drop shipper and they have three products that they drop ship. Then, if you want to expand your business, you're going to have to start a relationship with new drop shipping suppliers, since that's a very limited number, as opposed to a drop shipper that may drop ship over a hundred products then there's a lot of room for you to expand you also want to look for the profit margin so you want to ask yourself that question how much money am I really making here and when you add up all the fees unfortunately in most cases it's not that much when you drop ship but it's something that you want to ask yourself other things you want to look for is what do they charge for shipping a lot of times drop shippers will charge you a shipping cost that's more than the postage itself and that's because they're taking on the hassle of shipping the product for you. And on top of that, many drop shippers add on a drop shipping fee. So you just want to make sure you know all the costs before you start to do business with a drop shipper. So now you're probably wondering, where do I find these drop shippers? Well, there's a few places you can go to. You can do a Google search, and that's a great free option if you have an idea of the type of product you want to sell. You can use wholesaleforum.com and that's a place where you can just browse and find drop shippers. And that's good if you don't have an idea of any type of product you want to sell. And then Worldwide Brands is an option. And what Worldwide Brands is, is it's a database of a lot of different drop shipping suppliers. And it's not perfect. There are a lot of complaints about it. But when it comes to databases full of drop shippers, it is the best one that I know exists. And it's a one-time fee of around $300, so it is very pricey. But if you're really serious about dropshipping, that's an option for you to find the right suppliers. 
And lastly, you want to avoid middlemen such as Doba or Salehu. And what these middlemen do is they claim to make it extremely easy on you. So you sign up for their membership and you then have access to thousands of products from all these different whole drop shippers. And then they drop ship, or sorry, then you can easily drop ship any of those products yourself. And you don't have to contact a manufacturer directly. So it's in a very tr attractive offer. But the truth is there is no money to be made because with the middleman such as Doba or Salehu, you're going to be paying so much just to buy the product itself that you're not going to have a profit margin. And I've tried on Doba for half a year trying to make money on it. And although I sold like two or three products, it was a complete waste of time. And I really don't believe there's any money to be made. It's borderline scam, even though it is possible to make money. And I would just strongly urge you to stay away from any paid databases besides worldwidebrands.com. So now let's take a look at what this looks like. So I just opened up all those resources for you. So the first thing here is, here's Doba's website. So this is just so you get a feel for what these things are. <laughs> Sorry, what these middlemen are. So don't do Doba. Sale who's a really common one. They say you get access to over 8,000 suppliers and 1.6 million products. And it says at genuine wholesale prices, but that's really not true. You're not making enough money. And it's really just a waste of time. So I'm going to get rid of those two. And now let's get serious. So Google's great, like I said, if you have the idea of a type of product you want to sell. So one I've been thinking about is wrought iron. So you can type in wrought iron drop shipper. And this is a great example of one that comes up right on here. So you can click on that, and here they have a lot of information about how they drop ship, what you need, and how you can get in contact with them, their catalog, and they have their drop shipping account application, and they also have their return policy right up here. So although it's not a great return policy, it's good to know up front what their policy is. So if you're interested in dropshipping wrought iron, this is one way to do it. And let's say that you didn't find a dropshipper right on the first one. Well, you can keep scrolling down and just looking through and seeing if you find a good dropshipper. Another option you can do is if you don't have an idea of the type of product you want to sell, you can go to wholesaleforum.com and click on the dropshipping section. And here is just a bunch of different drop shippers that you can use. So if any of these products seem interesting to you, you can simply open it up. And they usually give you a few options to choose from. That's strange. Oh, I see. In this one, they didn't have one. Here we go. So here's an example of another website that drop ships. So you just want to play around with these links and see if you find anything that interests you. So although this is more time intensive, it is completely free. And like I said, just a great way if you don't know which type of product you want to sell. And one thing to keep in mind here is the flag show you where the drop shipper is located. So if you're in the US, you're going to want to find another drop shipper that's in the US because then the shipping costs are going to be much lower and it's much easier to ship something within the same country that you live in. And as you can see, they have a few different countries here. So you just want to play around with that and keep an eye out for the flag. And then lastly, if you want to pay for a database, Worldwide Brands is the best way to go. And you can find them at worldwidebrands.com. They have a lot of free information that will help you be successful dropshipping. So you may be wondering, what's the difference between Worldwide Brands and a middleman like Doba? And the difference is Worldwide Brands connects you to the dropshipping companies, but that's it. They don't do any more of the work for you. How Doba works is as soon as you're 
a member, you instantly have access to thousands of products and you can simply place an order on Doba and that product will be drop shipped to whoever you want. Worldwide Brands doesn't act like that. They'll give you the contact information for any drop shipping company that you're interested in, but you're going to have to contact that drop shipping company directly and create a relationship with them. So in a way, Worldwide Brands just helps facilitate connections with drop shipping suppliers, but you have to do the rest yourself. Now, $300 is a lot for this database, so I'd only recommend purchasing this if you're really serious about dropshipping. And like I mentioned in an earlier video, I would highly recommend against dropshipping, and I would wholesale instead. But if you're diehard into the idea of dropshipping, this would be the place to do it. So in this video, you're gonna learn what wholesaling is, and the pros and cons of wholesaling. So what is wholesaling? Now wholesaling is when you order a product directly from the manufacturer that produces it. And then you receive that product as inventory shipped directly to your home or place of business. And once you have that inventory, when a customer places an order with you, you ship that product from your home or business directly to your customer. So what usually happens when you wholesale is you order your products in batches from the manufacturer. So when I was selling bracelets, I would order about 60 bracelets at a time. So I'd place a large order with the manufacturer. Once they were done producing these bracelets, they would ship the bracelets directly to my home. And that meant that those bracelets were a form of inventory. So I would have 60 bracelets sitting in my home. And whenever a customer placed an order with me for one bracelet, I would then ship a bracelet directly to the customer. So the advantages to wholesaling are you have much more control over the whole process. You're getting the products delivered directly to your home and you're shipping those products to your customer. You're not leaving that responsibility to somebody else. You also have a much higher profit margin because no one's doing all the work for you. You're going to make a lot more money because you can buy these products pretty cheaply and then you can sell them for a much higher cost on eBay. There's also many more suppliers that wholesale. There are tens of thousands of manufacturers that you can wholesale products from. And in a later video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to find these profitable products. But at this point, it's just important to know that when you wholesale, there are an endless amount of products that you can choose from. And finally, in most cases, you'll spend a lot less on shipping. And that's because when a manufacturer drop ships a product for you, they usually charge a lot in shipping costs. But as you'll find out in a later video, there's ways to ship items very cost effectively, which means you're not going to pay that much for shipping when you're shipping the products yourself. Now, there are disadvantages to wholesaling, and most of these disadvantages actually scare people away, so they don't give wholesaling a try. And the first is inventory. So when you order your products, like I said with the bracelets that I ordered, you then have to sell those bracelets. If nobody's buying the bracelets, then you still have inventory in your home that you've already paid for. So that's why it's very important when you're finding profitable products in the first place is to make sure it's a product that has a market and people are willing to pay for it. The next disadvantage is there's an upfront cost. So you have to place that large order with the wholesaler before you get money from your potential customers. Now, the way around this is to order small batches first and then make money. And when you make money, then you can afford larger batches and you keep doing this and order more and more large orders over time. And the last disadvantage is shipping time. And that's because once you place an order with the manufacturer, it often takes them a while to make the products and eventually ship it to you. So with these disadvantages in mind, Wholesaling is still by far the best option, and it's really not as bad as most people think. And the biggest thing I've heard that stops people from wholesaling is that upfront cost. But the truth is you can get started for less than $200 and just work your way up as you make more sales and generate more money. So now it's time to learn more about Alibaba. And if you planned on importing products internationally and going through the wholesaling route, 
Alibaba by far is the best database that you can use. It's completely through. Sorry, it's completely free, and it has tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of wholesalers that you can get in contact with. So when you're looking for wholesalers on Alibaba, there's a few things you want to look for. And first of all, you want to look for credible suppliers. In other words, is there a supplier that you can trust? You also want to look at the price per unit. What does each unit cost you? And that way you can come up with your profit margin if you know the true cost for each item you're buying. And then there's the minimum order, or the MOQ. And MOQ stands for minimum order quantity. And it's the least amount you have to order in order to do business with a wholesaler. So let's say that a wholesaler has an MOQ of 50. What they're saying is you have to order at least 50 of their product, otherwise they're not gonna do business with you. You also wanna know how much does it cost for a product sample? And that's because before you place a large order with a wholesaler, you always want to order a sample first. And that will make sure that you know the product that you're getting before you invest a lot of money. And you also want to ask them, can they ship to your location, wherever it is that you live at? And lastly, it's very important that you make sure that they're willing to take on the shipping responsibility. So if you're importing from China or internationally, you have no idea what shipping companies to use in that country, and you don't want to have to deal with customs and tariffs. So you want to make sure that the wholesaler is going to do that for you. And if you ask them, they will tell you whether or not they do that. And it may cost extra, but it's definitely worth it because it will save you a ton of time and hassle. So here's some general Alibaba tips. It's completely free to make an account. And once you create an account, you can send as many messages as you like. So don't worry about sending too many messages. You're not committing anything if it's just a message asking for more information. And you are really looking for a fit. So you're looking for a business that is going to make money off you and you're going to make money selling their product. So if you find the right supplier on Alibaba, it is a win-win situation. And like I mentioned in the previous slides, you always want to order a sample first. And that's extremely important. And I know you might not want to spend that money for a sample up front but it can save you a lot of money before you place that big order. And I actually have made this mistake where I placed a big order for $350 without ordering a sample first, and the product was not the one in the picture, and I couldn't sell it, so I just had to throw it away. So that was very frustrating, and it would have been avoided if I had ordered a sample first. So now let's take a look at Alibaba's website. So to get there, you simply type in Alibaba in the top bar, and this is it. So you have two options here. One is if you don't have an idea of the type of product you want to import, you can browse through the categories. And the second is if you know what you want to, you're looking for, you can search for it. So let's say we're looking for men's rings. And the first thing you want to do right off the bat is check the gold supplier, check on-site check, and check assess suppliers. And this really just helps us make sure we're dealing with credible suppliers. So that doesn't mean that all these suppliers are really great necessarily, but it does mean that they have been checked <clears throat> for quality and they meet certain criteria. Now you have another option, which is a new one, which is trade assurance. And the idea is suppliers that have been certified with trade assurance have order quality and timely shipment. So that's a great option to check, but the problem is since it's so new, not that many suppliers have this certification. So as you can see here, right now there's 5,000 products listed. But when we click on Trade Assurance, we know we're getting even higher quality suppliers, but there's only 117 products available. So what I'd recommend is you check this off, look through these suppliers, and if you don't find a product or supplier that's a good fit for you, then you can uncheck Trade Assurance, and you're still dealing with good suppliers, most likely. But for this example, let's just click that, and then you can scroll down, see if you find something that looks like a good fit for you. Now it's really interesting to notice we typed in men's rings, but most of the products here actually aren't men's rings. And the reason I think that is, is just because of this trade assurance thing. So if we uncheck that, we get much more specific results. So this looks like an interesting ring. 
and it's showing the price as a dollar and twenty cents to ten dollars per ring, which is very seems very crazy. But we can find out more by clicking on it. And that's because a lot of times these prices are actually not very accurate and even the minimum order quantity. The best way to get accurate information is to contact the supplier directly. And most often they'll give you a price list where you can see exactly how much to pay for any of their products. And don't be scared away by that 100 pieces minimum order because like I said, it's actually in most cases a lot lower than 100. And the only way to find that information is to contact the supplier directly. But keep in mind, it's completely free to request more information. So you can send as many of those messages out as you'd like. So let's say you don't have an idea of what type of product you want to sell. And that's where the categories come in handy. So this is a great way to just explore different types of products. So one area that I go to a lot is the gifts, sports, and toys. And you can either click on this or get even more specific. And let's say bamboo crafts. And here you can just look for interesting products that you might want to import. And although the price isn't always accurate, it gives you an idea of what you can expect to pay. So this is just a great way for you to explore Alibaba and find profitable products. And like I said, there are tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of suppliers which also means tens to hundreds of thousands of different products. So you'll never run out of products that you can find here. It's a great way to find niche products. So now that you know how to find products in Alibaba, you're probably wondering how do we know if these products are profitable? Or in other words, how do we know that we want to import these products and we're going to make a decent amount of money once we go to sell it on eBay? And there's a few things that we can look for to help us determine this ahead of time. And by far the most important thing we can do is use eBay's completed listing tool. Now this completed listing tool is a free to use tool that's directly on eBay's website. And it tells us some really important information. What it tells us is whether or not an item sold successfully in the past. And also if it did sell successfully, how much did it sell for? And this allows us to guess about how much we can make once we sell that product on eBay. Also, when we're looking for profitable products, we want to look for products that are easy to ship. And that's because there's going to be two different shipping periods for this product. One is when you're importing the product from an overseas manufacturer or a wholesaler. And the smaller the item, the more you're going to save in shipping costs there. And also when you ship the product to your customer. If your product's easy to ship, then you're going to save money there as well. And lastly, it's really important to think about what is your true profit margin. So when you factor in all the cost, how much money are you really making when you sell that product? So now let's take a look at eBay's completed listing tool. So to get to this, we're going to go to ebay.com. And in this example, I'm just going to use banana holders. So here, we're on eBay and in order for the completed listing tool to work you're gonna to have to be logged into an eBay account and you're gonna to wanna to scroll down and right here where it says show only check the completed listings tab and then what I usually like to do is click on the buy it now since in most cases I always list items as a buy it now auction but here we can see a banana holder that sold for twenty dollars and if we click on this listing we're gonna get a lot more information So here is everything that's on the product description. And we can see that they offered free shipping. And then there's also some information about the product here. So that's one example, but we want to find a few more to make sure they're selling consistently. So here's one that sold for $11. And right here we can see that six of them have sold. And if we click on that six, we'll see on what dates they sold. So they were actually selling pretty frequently. The 21st, the 15th, and two sold on the same day. So there is a decent amount of demand for this product. 
And whenever it's black, it means the item did not sell successfully. So we can learn about the a lot about the items that did sell, but also from the items that didn't sell. So what was it about this banana holder that didn't sell, whereas this one did? And it could be a lot of factors. It could be the design of the product. Maybe it's not as appealing. The price, but this price is actually pretty good. What I think it might have been in this case was the product title. This seems like a very strange product title. But then again, this one does too. So a lot of times you... There is no clear reason why an offer sold for what it did. And that's why you have to look at multiple listings and just get a feel for it. So this one sold for $16. Maybe putting new in the title made it more helpful. So we could always do testing to determine that. These ones did not sell that well. That one didn't sell. But this one with the fruit bowl sold for $19. And we can see 31 of them sold. And by clicking on that, we can see that they sold semi-frequently. Few in December, few in November. That one did not sell. That one with the wood sold. This one sold here. So after doing this for a while, you have to make your own decision about whether or not you think this item's worth importing. Honestly, at this point, I would look for another item since half of these are not selling successfully and only half of them are. But if you think you can determine why these successful ones are selling and you can replicate that, then maybe this is a product that you'd want to import. But there is no real science to this. It's just going through and determining what percentage of them are selling successfully, how much are they selling for, what product title are they using, and more specifically in this case, what style banana holder are they selling. And with this information from the completed listing tool, we can go back to Alibaba and search banana holders and see what styles they have available and about how much we can expect to spend on them. So this one that we saw selling for around 10 to $20 is available for two to $8. So that might be something we're interested in and we can contact the supplier to get the true cost for this and also get an updated minimum order. So hopefully we don't have to order a hundred of these. And these are a dollar to three each for this bamboo holder. And I saw this one selling for over $10 each. So there's potential profit to be made there. So there, like I said, there is no science behind this, but if you just explore using eBay's completed listing tool, you'll get a feel for which products have profit potential and which ones don't. Congratulations on making it this far in my eBay course. You're doing really great. You've made a lot of progress, and by now, you understand the basics of creating a profitable eBay business. Now I want to take a chance to invite you to my other in-depth eBay course, where you can keep your momentum and continue learning. In this expanded eBay course, you will get an expanded discussion of how to find profitable products. You'll also get an Excel calculator to calculate profit margins for you a much more expanded discussion on how to find and communicate with international wholesalers, and overall over four and a half hours of extremely valuable content that will help you create your own profitable eBay business. And to find this course, you can go on udemy.com and simply type in eBay business. And this first course that comes up is my in-depth eBay course, and you can click on that. And this course normally costs $99 to enroll in, but since you've made it this far in my eBay course, I want to invite you to continue learning for only $19. So to do that, you can click on the redeem a coupon button and simply type in continue learning and click on apply. And that's it. You now have access to this eBay course for only $19. And from this point, you can click on the blue take this course button and you can start learning instantly.